going to cover entropy. The first law of thermodynamics says that the energy within the universe is constant. Energy is neither lost nor destroyed. The second law of thermodynamics on which we're going to focus today is that the universe moves towards increasing entropy. Entropy is S or delta S, which is change in entropy. Entropy is the same thing as disorder. So the universe moves toward increasing disorder. So in what chemistry ways does entropy increase? First of all, entropy increases as one goes from a solid to a liquid, or more dramatically, from a liquid to a gas. As the particles spread out from each other, gain more distance from each other, entropy increases. Entropy also increases if a solid or liquid is dissolved in a solvent. Again, the particles spread out more, this increases entropy. In this example, we have sodium chloride dissolving in water. Sodium chloride dissociates into the ions sodium and chloride, hence entropy increases. Number three, entropy increases as the number of particles in a system increases. So when we go from dinitrogen tetraoxide to two molecules of nitrogen dioxide, we are increasing the number of particles. We're going from one molecule to two, so entropy is increasing. Four, the entropy of any material increases with increasing temperature. So as we increase temperature, we give more kinetic energy to the particles. The particles move around more and are and separate from each other more. That increases the entropy. Number five, entropy is higher for weakly bonded compounds than for compounds with very strong covalent bonds. And six, entropy increases as the mass of a molecule increases. Seven, entropy increases as the complexity of a molecule increases. This complexity can be a number of atoms, number of heavier atoms, etc. So here we're going from methane to ethane to propane. The number of carbons and hydrogens is increasing, so the entropy increases. There are two rules that we use for predicting the delta S, the entropy change in a reaction. First, we look at the states, whether we're talking about gases, liquids, or solids. And then we look at the number of moles of reactants and products. So when we say that entropy increases, delta S would be positive because it's final, delta, delta S is final entropy minus initial entropy. If final entropy is greater than initial entropy, it's going to be positive. And entropy decreases, we say that delta S is negative. Again, final entropy is less than initial entropy, so final entropy minus initial entropy is negative. So let's look at some examples. Remember, we're going to look at states of matter. We're going to look at number of particles. Here we have two molecules of water breaking up into two molecules of hydrogen gas and one molecule of oxygen gas. So we're going from liquid to gas, looks like a positive entropy change, and we're going from two particles to three particles. So I would say that entropy is positive. Here we have one mole of nickel solid reacting with four moles of carbon monoxide gas to form one mole of nickel tetracarbonyl. So we're going from one solid atom or one solid molecule and four gaseous molecules are going from five particles to one particle. So I would say entropy is decreasing negative. Going from liquid water to solid water, we're freezing water. The entropy has to be decreasing because we're going from liquid to solid. So entropy is negative. Here we have silver ion plus chloride ion coming together to form the precipitate silver chloride, the solid silver chloride. Since we're having two particles come together into a solid, entropy is negative. Carbonic acid becoming water and carbon dioxide. It is one compound is becoming two compounds, and one of those compounds is becoming as a gas, so entropy change is positive. Entropy is a state function just like enthalpy, which means it does not depend on the path taken to reach that specific value. So when we ca calculate the, the change in entropy of a reaction, or in this case, the standard change of entropy of a reaction. We're talking about the change in entropy of the products minus the change in entropy of the reactants. So let's look at this sample problem. Find the change in entropy, the delta S for the hydrolysis of urea, and they give us the equation given the following entropy values. Since we have the, entropy, the standard entropies of formation of each of these compounds, we then can use that by taking the entropies of formation of the products minus the entropies of formations of the reactants. 
So we start with the products, carbon dioxide. The entropy of formation of carbon dioxide is 213.6, and we only have one mole of carbon dioxide, plus the entropy of formation of ammonia, 192.5, but we have two moles of that, so plus 2 minus 192.5. And we're going to subtract from that the entropy of the reactants. We have CONH22, and we've got one mole of that, so its entropy of formation is 173.8, and also minus the other reactant, liquid water, and its entropy of form formation, excuse me, is 69.9. We total all of that up, and we get the change of entropy, the standard change of entropy, as 354.9 joules per kmol.